Hey folks, this is LT with the channel And We Know based off of the Bible verse Romans 8.28. It's been a great journey. Did not expect to get this many subscribers in such a short period. Absolutely amazing and I appreciate all of the support that I've been receiving, especially the great notes that I've been getting here almost every single day. Messages of support to my email, to Facebook, through Twitter, just uh, all of the thanks for the different videos that are being put together, specifically Serial Brain 2 I've been focusing on and trying to take a little time off to be with my family and work on my other business. It's amazing to me to have good news to start out with, and one of them is watching Nancy Pelosi squirm as she saw the House vote for what she said would never happen. She said, you don't have the votes to the President of the United States to get that wall built. And what do we notice today? That the House approves the wall funding as the shutdown nears. Of course, there's many that are saying it's not going to get passed through the Senate. Before I get to the Q post, I wanted to, again, get to Corey's digs. Uh, love to point out that she placed another great article, Part 2, to the Arkansas Swamp. She definitely has a great, uh, great writing skills and investigative type skills, and I enjoyed reading this particular article. I'm going to read some of it for you now, but for sake of time, I will cut it short and talk more about this later in detail. But she says that the Arkansas Swamp continues to bleed while the spotlight shines on the Clinton Foundation. And uh, part one of the Arkansas Swamp covered dozens of arrests, indictments, guilty pleas, and a key chart indicating potential upcoming arrests from ongoing investigations. Now, if you haven't seen part one and you go to coreysdigs.com, I really uh, want you to read that part one and go near the bottom and watch all of the indictments and the arrests and guilty pleas that are happening. The Deputy AG Lloyd Warford, head of the Medicaid Fraud <clears throat> Control Unit in Little Rock, made it very clear that there are ongoing investigations on a federal level as well. This is what he had to say when asked more indict about more indictments that are coming. I'm reasonably certain there will be more people charged either by us or the feds. While our investigation is separate from the federal investigation, we have communicated with them about our targets and their targets. And to some extent, there's been some cooperation. I'm going to go down here and show you some of the cases. First case, Henry Wilkins IV, former Arkansas State Senator and Jefferson County Judge, who pleaded guilty in April to conspiring to commit offenses against the United States, was scheduled for sentencing on December 7th after already being delayed. It was postponed again until January 30th, 2019, based on a sealed motion granted by Chief U.S. District Judge Brian Miller in Little Rock. Another case, second case here on November 5th, Harold L. H. L. Moody, a special events coordinator for Pulaski County Youth Services, was arrested on two counts of receipt of child pornography and three counts of distribution of child pornography and a single count of conspiring to advertise child pornography. The nature of the photographs and videos Moody is accused of distributing contain images of babies and young children being raped. According to Agent Bennett's testimony, she observed Moody as initially viewing these images, and I'm not going to get too much further than that one. Third case attorneys for Jim Parsons, former Ecclesia College board member, is suing Preferred Family Health Care and its subsidiaries Decision Point, Dayspring Behavioral Health Services, and Wilbur D. Mills Treatment Center for ill-gotten state taxpayer money. The suit lists 52 8 Point eight million from state taxpayers between 2011 and 2016. Fourth case, another conviction in a Philadelphia case recently took place on December 3rd, which just so happens to include D.A. Jones, a lobbyist who waived his right to a grand jury and pleaded guilty in December 2017 for conspiring with a former Arkansas state legislator and preferred family health care to spend nearly one million dollars on illegal political activity and kickbacks to conspirators. This is uh, cases covered in Arkansas Swamp Part One. 
So you continue to go down and read, and you'll see the critical testimony on the Clinton Foundation and even more how she wraps up this amazing story. It's lengthy, but it's wonderful to read, and the link will be below for her website. She was also interviewed recently here with Christopher McDonald, the host of The McFiles. I'll put that link below. Great listening, great report there. And one of the things I like about her site, she has different things, and I want to share another one. If you click the four diggers portion up here at the top, four diggers, you can go down and find a list of great resources that she's put together, spent many, many hours working on. And one of them is called the Clinton Death List. You click on that, and it will give you a host of different resources and things that she put together for that particular list for all the folks that know uh, basically what's been going on. This is from CBS Las Vegas, list of Clinton associates who allegedly died mysteriously. Check it out. So she's got a whole slew of information and numbers and names. So we're going to get to Q post here. I want to get to the first one on the far right, 2630. We're going to zoom in here. Future proves past. News unlocks. You have more than you know. And they put a link to foxnews.com. Uh, politics McCain associate gave unverified steel dossier to BuzzFeed. So you click on that link. It takes you to that article on Fox News. McCain associate right here. Steel dossier with BuzzFeed. Court finally says, so hmm, McCain associate showing that there's things that Q shared with us that were actually happening. And here we are, not even 20 hours later, 20 hours ago, excuse me, news is posted about what's going on with this. So an associate of the late Arizona Republican Senator John McCain shared with BuzzFeed News a copy of the unverified salacious opposition research dossier alleging that Russians had compromising material on President Trump, according to a bombshell federal court filing Wednesday. McCain had strenuously denied being the source of the BuzzFeed after it published the dossier, which was funded by the Democratic National Committee and the Hillary Clinton presidential campaign. There you go. I'm leaving the link below for this one also. Nice read. Let's get back to that post. You have more than you know. And, in quotes, House Speaker Paul Ryan's chief of staff, John Burks. When did Paul Ryan announce he was retiring? got that coming up right here. He announced it on April 11th, 2018. That's when this was posted, this article. He announces his retirement at the end of the term. You get back here. Why would the Speaker of the House retire? What was the age of Paul Ryan? Well, I pulled that up on Wikipedia, and it says right here that he was born January 29th, 1970. So then sometimes reading between the lines demonstrates those complicit in treasonous, traitorous acts are no longer, or soon to be, in positions of power. Forced? Was he forced out? Republicans easier to remove than the Democrats? Are the Democrats holding on to power as long as possible for hoping to sway the pending action for cover? Think D-Class. And think Supreme Court or Sarah Carter, what they're, they're putting there, Sarah Carter, but I believe it's Supreme Court. Tell me what you think down below. How many senior FBI and DOJ officials have been removed? None left by choice. Nothing to see here. Nothing is being done. The biggest accurate conspiracy. Fake news attacks demonstrate what? It demonstrates that we're on to something, that we're on to truth. It's amazing. Almost every single video that I upload to YouTube, they immediately demonetize and ask for a review. And most of the time, they will not approve them because they don't like the subject matter that we're putting out. So let's go back to the Q post on Q2631. We have this article right here, and it says, oh, Anans, Anons, excuse me, know why. And when you click on that, it takes you to this article from August 25th, 2017. Donald Trump's telling ch change to the Oval Office. The president is returning to a freshly renovated White House, and it includes an unusual display. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole article, but I'm going to show you this photo. And if, when you read the entire, entire article, you'll notice that he points out how many flags of the military surround the president of the United States. And there's one of my favorites, the Marine Corps. 
raw simplify. So he says that we definitely know why the anons are specifically why would we have all those flags surrounding the president? What is going on? And uh, I was reading through trying to do some research to find out what other folks were saying. And one of the things that caught my attention was somebody stating that those flags could have been pulled from the deep state where they were hidden or stolen. And they're put in his office to show we've got them back and we've got control. That was a pretty good one. I like that. Stick to it. Other folks can uh, let me what they know what they think below. Then we get to the next post, 2632, on Twitter. Why would the FBI direct director take the time to visit all 56 FBI field offices around the entire United States? Completed this week. Logical thinking. That's a lot of visits. A lot of traveling for one man. I'm going to click on that link here. This week, the FBI Director Ray completed his visit to all 56 field offices, beginning at FBI Knoxville in September 2017 and ending yesterday at FBI Tampa. Director Ray has had the honor of seeing the great work the men and women of the FBI doing, doing every day throughout the country and the world. Wow. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, boy, this is just great timing. And we had another post here. Go up to the top, 2633. Same little link that we have from last year, this decoding, basically showing that no name um, was behind something not good. And on the very bottom of this particular one, Q says you have the keystone. Did some research on keystone. And what it seems to me is that you have the piece that holds everything else together. It reminds me of when I was stationed in Iwakuni, Japan many years ago. They have the Kintai Bridge. That bridge is held together not by uh, nails and what have you. It's held together by the stones themselves. And there's a keystone that keeps it all together. So our next post, one of my favorites uh, here is Whitaker, 2634. Whitaker told he doesn't need to recuse himself from the Mueller probe. Report from The Hill. Whitaker told he doesn't need to recuse himself from overseeing Mueller investigation. And we're told by Q, <laughs> that's old news. You know something about Whitaker? is one, one of my favorite photos of him right there. You don't want to mess with that guy. Not at all. Man, you walk into... Uh, a room knowing that this guy lifts weights and he's pretty powerful and pretty dangerous guy. And you know his history, and I'm not going to get into him now, but most people have done their research and watched a lot of videos on him. He is the real deal. So, our next post, 2635. The D Party, Democrat Party, will cease to exist once it's all exposed. Fake news can no longer control, dampen the public awareness of the truth. Dark to light Q. Now, here's this link. I'm going to pull it up right here. Fox News. Once again, Fox. A lot of folks are upset with Fox. They're doing a lot of stupid stuff lately. I still love um, to watch Hannity every now and then and Tucker Carlson. Democratic operatives created fake Russian bots designed to link Kremlin to Roy Moore in Alabama race. They did what? They created what? Fake Russian bots. So, the Democratic operatives backed by a liberal billionaire and facilitated by a former Obama official created thousands of fake Russian accounts to give an impression the Russian government was supporting Alabama Republican Roy Moore in last year's election against now Senator Doug Jones. The secret project, which had a budget of just $100,000 and was carried out on Facebook and Twitter, was revealed after the New York Times obtained an internal report detailing the efforts. <laughs> so here we go, folks. Just more exposure coming up of that sick party. And then we had another post, 2636, Alice and Mad Hatter. Of course, that's referring to Hillary Clinton and Tory. We had a post referring to that back in uh, 4 October 2018. Hillary gets email from Mad Hatter celebrating Julian Assange arrest. And that had a page 20 reference to this FOIA. I don't want to get too much in the weeds on this. I did a lot of research. I read a lot of stuff. And everybody seems to agree that this takes you in all kinds of directions. But the main theme behind what I was reading 
is the fact that this uh, Marty Tory was sharing something with Hillary that seemed to be very evil, and it was caught on WikiLeaks. Let me know what you think about that one. So here is the cream of the crop. The thumbnail that I put together, the reason that I wanted to sit down with very little time that I have on my hands, especially working on another Serial Brain 2 video, I wanted to share my thoughts on what's going on with Mattis's departure. Here we are with QPost 2637. Roger's departure, Intel. Sessions departure, Law. Kelly departure, Warfare, Military. Mattis departure, Warfare, Military. Do you notice a pattern? Q. Now, I haven't done many Q updates lately. Been very busy. You heard me mention that before. But I tell you, I saw a lot of folks with a lot of doubts and a lot of, again, well, what's going on? They're, you know, they watch the mainstream media. Then they have conclusions based off what they're reporting that just something is going on between Mattis and Trump and Trump is making the wrong decisions. Folks, have we not learned ever since Trump was running for president when we think something weird is going on or it doesn't seem right, we learn two, three weeks later what, what's really going on. And I want to just share something right here. Before I get into it, this actually when I read it reminded me of this particular uh, picture right here. Um, I don't uh, really want to talk too much about it, but it's the transfiguration picture of Jesus Christ standing on the mountain, and you had Moses, and you had Elijah on the other side, and he was shining bright when he opened up his garments in front of Peter, James, and John, the disciples that he took up there. And why does it remind me of that? Because you have the law, Moses on one side, and Elijah the prophets on the other. So he's standing between the law and the prophets. And I saw this, the law and then the intel, they seem to know what's going on. And it just reminded me of that. just wanted to throw that in as a just a side item, cake on top of this whole dessert that we're getting here. And I pulled up this, and you can go through on the Q posts and look at what other anons are actually saying about this particular event. And I couldn't find anything really other than what I believe is a message to us to let us know that there are tribunals coming and that, you know what, with tribunals, you've got to have military officers who are watching and actually making the decisions of what's happening to those people in the tribunals. So that made me pull up a post from 20 August 2018, nothing to see here. We, we talked about subversion. We talked about civilians that are going to be uh, taken in for treason. And there was the order that's coming out will be dated January 1st, 2019, right here. Section 12, in accordance with Article 33 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, as amended by Section 5204, the Secretary of Defense, in consultation with the Secretary of Homeland Security, will issue non-binding binding guidance regarding factors that commanders, convening authorities, staff judge advocates, and judge advocates should take into account when exercising their duties with respect to the disposition of charges and specifications in the interest of justice and discipline. And this all revolves around what? FBI personnel removal. We just talked about the FBI director going to every office, cleaning house. That's what I believe it is. Department of Justice personnel removal. State personnel removal, White House personnel removal, the C, you know what, A removal, House personnel removal, Chair, CEO, Vice President, uh, VP removal. And I don't believe that's the Vice President of the United States. I believe that's just VP for very important people. Military budget, military presence around the President of the United States. And at the time, there's 45,000 sealed indictments, and we know they're way up above 60,000 now. We also know that the U.S. private prison program was rebooted by the Trump administration. Jeff Sessions gave the order to revive the Justice Department's use for, for profit of for-profit prisons. Folks, something's going on when you're keeping those prisons open. And one of the uh, cherries on top is when it comes to Guantanamo, Trump is truly the builder-in-chief. And just a reminder that Guantanamo Bay received a $200 million construction bill. They're, they're working on it. 
And this started, you know, this article, 28 March 2018, um, I'm pretty sure they're on their way to something pretty significant, especially when the biggest ticket item is the spending law and $115 million for a new 848 troop barracks. Why do you need that many troops in Guantanamo Bay? Why? So here we go. Uh, pulled up this uh, Anon all for our military officers. Those four that have been uh, seemingly upset with the president and they, they're retiring or they're quitting. All four are military officers. They're leaving the jobs, the administration, which frees them up to do something else. Judges in a military tribunal. Many have not noticed that Sessions is a captain in the army. For those military tribunals to take place, folks, uh, pretty amazing if these are the guys that will actually sit on this case. These here. Notice the pattern. <laughs> Rogers, Mattis, Kelly, Sessions. Whew. I would not want those guys staring me down. So then we get Q2638, chemical attack in Syria. Public pulled out of troops in Syria. History will not repeat itself this time. And my thoughts are only on this is that they do these fake chemical attacks which draws folks to say hey let's bring our troops in and start something so that we can continue to have false flag events and I'm going to show you something I dug up here from a while back on YouTube this is a Syrian chemical attack the terrorists teaching the children how to fake it check this out Okay, enough of that. So now you understand some of the stuff that's going on with that. I don't want to get too much in the weeds, but I want to just share with you some of the things that I usually find out, um, especially when you talk about false flag events or events that seem to be faked, joined in with the mainstream media, draws everybody's attention. Next thing you know, we're sending our troops over to places that we shouldn't be. So there we go with that. Had some great uh, opening videos that popped up on my Twitter account. And one of them is Nancy Pelosi seems to be losing her mind. A lot of stuff is happening to her. She is not a happy camper. And that is great news. Great news for all of us. I'm really proud of our president. I'm proud of what's going on with our country. And folks, if the patience is running thin, I completely understand. I want to end with this. I had a call with one of the folks that reached out to me on email. We had a great talk, and this man cares deeply about our country. And I want to lift him up in prayer as we finish up. This man has been through an awful lot. His patience is wearing thin with what is going on in the United States of America. It really feels like we've been given a lot of information. We're digging through. We're getting closer and closer, and it just seems like goalposts seem to be moved down the road. I, one of the things that I will never forget is watching Praying Medic, and he stated something that will stay with me. When the information is put out, and it's disinformation from Q, we're not the ones that are really affected. They're the ones that are looking, the evil ones, looking through these posts, trying to find out what's going on. It's driving them crazy when it doesn't go the way they see it or read into it. Whereas we should be at rest knowing that our president was put in by God Almighty. 
and his wife is doing a great job together with him in saving the children. And if you've been watching the Serial Brain 2 post, if you don't get all the numerology, one of the things that you will notice from the beginning to the end is there is communication back to the folks that use that, that those numbers to them to sh that they already know how to read. They already understand how to decode it. We're simply privy to what's going on in their communication to let them know they're done. They're finished. But I just want to say that we are supposed to not live in fear as believers in Christ. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you once again for the peace that you're bringing in our hearts and our minds. God, would you give us patience? Would you surround our president and his family with protection from the enemy who wants to destroy him and all of us in these channels that are putting out the truth? In Jesus' name, amen. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe and share. Thank you for everything you've done. God bless you all. Good night.